and welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's video, we're going to be going over your summer forecast for 2023, including your climate update as El Nino is developing rapidly into the middle of this summer. And then we'll take a look at your summer outlook for 2023, including the temperature and precipitation trends June through August. And then we'll also take a look at the severe weather forecast from June through August in today's video. But before we get to the video, make sure to subscribe down below if you like detailed weather breakdowns on North America, including Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics. Definitely provide all those weather videos each and every morning at 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time on this channel, so be sure to press the subscribe button down below. It's free to do. And also be sure to press the like button down below the video, the thumbs up button. It helps to get all of this weather information, including your summer forecast, out to as many people as possible. So I definitely appreciate it. But going first into the climate update, these are the sea surface temperature anomalies here currently across the Central Pacific Ocean, just to the west of South America. That is where we look for the development, rapid development at that of an El Nino that is starting to take shape out here across the the equatorial Pacific. And as these water temperatures continue to warm, that does mean the El Nino conditions will rapidly strengthen through the summer months. So taking a look at this, going all the way back to February, March, and even parts of April, we were at negative territory. That was our La Nina, our three-year La Nina that we were in. And then we crossed over to Enso Neutral, right over the zero category there. But now we're in positive territory, moving through late April and really through much of May. And that does mean we're transitioning rapidly towards an El Nino as we move forward toward the early summer months. So what does this mean for the summer and even upcoming fall? Well, it does look like we are definitely transitioning towards a weak El Nino really within the next couple of weeks. Once you get to positive 0.5, that is officially El Nino status. And a lot of the climate models are consolidating around that plus one or plus 1.5 category. Even a more bullish model, the uh, the CFS version two model, actually putting this up near plus two to plus 2.5 category, which would be a strong El Nino, which is still possible as we go through the middle and end of summer. So that will be something to consider as we move forward. But looking here at our temperature, and precipitation trends from June through August. Looking at climatology for June for the temperatures, normally across the Gulf Coast, the Southeast, and especially over here into Southern California, Southern Arizona, that is really where we warm up the most rapidly going through June. But we do warm up quite nicely up there to the north into the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and New England as well. And looking at this June, the height anomaly. So looking here, we have a little bit of ridging starting to build across the western United United States, across the Rockies, and across the Great Plains with those lines curving farther up toward the north. But with blue anomalies across the east, that does mean some troughing may start to develop or continue to develop from May into June across the east coast of the United States. And what does this mean for our temperature forecast? So this is my June temperature forecast for 2023. I do expect above normal temperatures largely across much of the western two-thirds of the country. This does does include the West Coast, much of the Rockies, and then inching its way eastward toward the Northern Plains, including the Dakotas and parts there of Minnesota. Average conditions in between from Texas through the Missouri Valley into the Great Lakes and portions of New England. And then I have below normal temperatures, at least slightly below normal from East Texas through portions of the Southeast and on up into the Mid-Atlantic, probably with some more troughing starting to build in across the Eastern United States through the month of June, trending more toward below normal temperatures underneath some of those uh, falling pressures across those areas. But as we go into June for the precipitation, largely across the central plains on eastward, that's where we usually see the heaviest of the rain and especially down into Florida as well, climatologically for June. And here's my June precipitation forecast for 2023. So it does look below normal up here across the upper Midwest, especially like North Dakota, northern Minnesota, getting into northern Wisconsin, the upper Great Lakes region, and then up into New England as well. And that could cover much of southeastern Canada. In between there, across portions of the lower Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and the Mid-Atlantic, parts of the southeast, I do expect average conditions for precipitation. And then a large zone of above normal precipitation underneath that from portions of the central Rockies, Wyoming, 
getting down into Colorado and then all across portions of the central and southern plains and then inching its way over toward the Tennessee Valley. That's where I expect a lot of rainfall events through the month of June and then more average conditions largely across the west coast from Washington State, Oregon, Idaho, Nevada, all the way back into California as we go through June. But then turning to July, these are your climatological areas for warming across portions of the south, but we do start to see the redder anomalies shifting farther to the north, which means the warmer temperatures will be moving farther north and obviously across portions of Death Valley here into Southern California, Southwestern Arizona, and Southern Nevada. That is where the strongest warming signal is for July here um, going forward. But it does look like it's going to be a lot of uh, rising heights across of North America going through July. So that does mean a large anchored high pressure system will likely develop somewhere across the four corners region or the central southern plains region and then we have northwest flow over top of that high pressure system we'll get to that here in the severe weather forecast shortly but with that pattern starting to set up into july this is my july temperature forecast for 2023 i do think a majority of the country probably 90 percent of the country will be above normal especially in this orange outlined area across the heartland of the country here the great plains on up into the midwest there into the corn belt and down into portions of the Tennessee Valley with more average temperatures across portions of the West Coast, including the Pacific Northwest. Now turning to precipitation, July again, a signal is highest for precipitation along and east of the Great Plains, especially down across the Gulf Coast into the Southeast, including Florida. That is where we have the rainiest weather usually for July. And here for my July precipitation forecast for 2023, there's going to be a couple of areas I am pinpointing for above normal precipitation. I do think across the northern plains, places like eastern Montana, the Dakotas, Minnesota here will probably have more above normal precipitation. That inches its way over towards Michigan and parts of Wisconsin. And then above normal, uh, above normal areas down here, of uh, precipitation down across the southeast, the mid-Atlantic, and the southern plains. I think we'll have more of an active subtropical jet down across this region, so that will feed into the above normal precipitation anomalies down here. And then a little bit more of a signal of slightly below normal precipitation across portions of southern Wyoming, down across the central Four Corners region, and into southern California. That's where I think the monsoon season will be, but I think a slightly below average monsoon season does look to be in the cards going into July and then more average conditions for precipitation across the Pacific Northwest and the Northeast and New England regions as well through July. Now moving ahead to our last month of August of 2023, this is climatologically what the temperatures look like. Again, of course, across the South, we're going to have the heat, but the heat starts to build a little bit more across the desert states as well into California, Nevada, Utah, getting down into Arizona, especially into August. August, and you do see the anchored high pressure system will be strengthening likely through much of the Rockies and much of the Great Plains through August. So with that said, I do think my August temperature forecast for 2023 does look the most bullish for an extreme heat wave somewhere across the middle of the country. I think much above normal temperatures will be likely, but blistering heat is possible. We could have heat ind index readings between 100 and 115 degrees across this red shaded color in spots. So we'll definitely have to be on the lookout for that, but still above normal in the orange and yellow as well. So much across, much of North America and including the United States here will be above normal through the month of August. Looking at the precipitation, same thing. Usually the highest up here into the upper Midwest, the Ohio Valley and much of the Southeast, again, including Florida through the month of August. But this August, I think, will be a little bit different as we're going into El Nino I think in the stronger El Nino as we get deeper into 2023 here into August, I think that will point more to below normal temperature or below normal precipitation farther to the north across the northern plains, the northern Rockies, and that extends east southeast bound into the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley, and really much of the East Coast seeing below normal precipitation through August, especially with that heat that will be building, and then above normal anomalies. 
anomalies down here across portions of Arizona, New Mexico, getting into Texas Hill Country, including the Rio Grande Valley, getting into Louisiana and parts of Mississippi. We will be seeing above normal precipitation through the month of August with the white shaded colors from Florida through the central plains and back across the west coast. That will be near average precipitation through the month of August. Now turning to our severe weather. So as we go through summer, we always have to talk about a term. It's called derecho. So this is the favorable derecho pattern. And what a derecho is, is a long-lived complex of storms, otherwise known as a windstorm. And the uh, the word derecho means straightforward. So this is kind of like a squall line that develops and then moves forward uh, through much of the Midwest sometimes, through the Ohio Valley or wherever they set up. And usually the most strongest of the derechos are called progressive derechos. Ratios, and those usually develop on the northern and northeastern periphery of a strong high pressure system. Now, not this this map does show the high pressure system across the southeast, but I think it'll be farther off to the west. We probably won't have the trough across the west, but you get the general idea that the airflow around the high pressure system is usually clockwise. So we have to be watching out for this pattern, especially getting into the middle and late summer months. And usually looking at derecho climatology, if you're in these blue or purple anomalies, that is where we see at least one derecho every year. But if you live down here into northeastern Oklahoma, southwestern Missouri, northwestern Arkansas, you see four derechos every three years according to derecho climatology. So that is something to note going through this upcoming summer. And looking at the derecho frequency by month, usually in May we see that peak at 22% and then it drops back to 20%, still high frequency through the month of June. We bump that back up to 21% in July and then it goes down in August to 6%. But we could see derechos at any point over a 12-month period from January through December. It definitely has happened in December even, so definitely here um, derecho season is into May, June, and July right through at least mid-summer. So we'll definitely have to keep an eye on that. So here's my severe weather probability for June. So I do think we'll have low probabilities really anywhere along and east of the Rockies. We have medium probabilities back here. I think there will be some great plane setups here across the Dakotas and back down through Nebraska portions there of New Mexico and Colorado. Probably more large hail events and damaging winds events than tornadoes during June. And I think the highest probability for severe weather will actually reside up into the upper Midwest and the western Ohio Valley. That is where we see the northern periphery of wherever that high pressure system does work in with northwest flow. We could have a derecho pattern set up into the middle and end of June. We'll definitely have to keep an eye on that. And if you guys remember, these are the storm reports from the 2012 North American derecho event. That was on June 29th of 2012. And that had a derecho starting in central Iowa moving across northern Illinois. Indiana, Ohio, moving through West Virginia, all the way to the mid-Atlantic states, and then off into the western Atlantic Ocean. That was a long-lived, very infamous derecho event that did happen back in 2012. And the pattern for June does look similar to this, unfortunately, going into this year. So it doesn't mean we're going to have one of these, but the potential is much higher going through June. Now, as we go into July, this is my severe weather probability for July 2023. I think the severe weather takes another uptick going into July up here from the upper Midwest through the Great Lakes in the Ohio Valley. I actually added an extreme area. This is my highest concern for a derecho occurring into July, anywhere in this high and extreme area up here into the upper Midwest, into the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic. But I do think the low and medium probabilities, we still will have severe weather from time to time into the Southern Plains, into the Southeast and portions of the Rockies, but probably not as frequent or as intense as we go through July across those areas. And then finally, my severe weather probability for August 2023. I think the severe weather starts to lean a little bit more inactive towards August, especially toward the latter half of the month. We'll be drying out a lot, so not a lot of frequent severe weather events, but if we did see them occur, they would likely occur up here into the Northern Plains, the Upper Midwest, and then across the Mid-Atlantic and parts of the I-95 corridor up toward the northeast, but anywhere really along and east of the Rockies, there is a low probability for severe weather going through the month of August. 
And putting it all together, this is my official summer forecast for 2023. We'll start out here in the west across portions of Washington State, Oregon, California, getting into Nevada here, Idaho, Montana, portions there of Wyoming, Utah, and Arizona. That's where we're going to see sizzling heat out across the west central United States. I think we'll have a lot of frequent heat waves in this area, so definitely be ready for that to hit the pool or hit some of the lakes out there because it will be a sizzling summer with summer time heat across those areas into the red here across the Dakotas, North and South Dakota, Nebraska, Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, getting down into Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. Those are the areas I expect severe weather and likely frequent severe weather events, which could include a more memorable or significant event sometime this summer, likely in July with potentially a derecho pattern setting up and then frequent rain and storms in this green shaded colors here into Colorado, New Mexico, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, getting into Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. That's where we could have frequent rain and storms with some flooding events, possibly a few significant flooding events early on this summer into June. And then I think across New England in the Northeast, including the I-95 corridor, across West Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, getting up there into New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, getting into portions there of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. We will be hot and dry this summer across those areas most likely, and that could lead to some drought across the region, especially as we get through July and August as we dry out even more then. And then a more average summer in the yellow down here across the southeast and parts of the Tennessee Valley. That does include Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, getting into the Carolinas, North and South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, and Florida. That'll be more of an average summer average heat, average rain and storms, maybe a couple severe weather events from time to time, but just an average summer across those regions. That is my official summer forecast for 2023. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to press the description down below and follow me on Twitter if you want additional weather forecast updates. I definitely appreciate that. Follow me at hweather420. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching my summer forecast video for 2023. Be sure to press the like button down below, the thumbs up button if you like the video. Also, leave any comments, questions, and concerns about the weather forecast in general or the summer forecast that I provided you down below, and I'll get to those questions and comments later on today. And be sure to press the subscribe button if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great weekend, everybody. A great Mother's Day tomorrow, and I'll see you all in the next video.